Hello, good afternoon everyone. I am Madhuri Bhattacharya, a Prime Minister Research Fellow in the Department of Chemistry, IIT Madras. So, I am uh, having the weekly discussion session on this Industrial and Organic Chemistry course. And uh, so far, uh, we have discussed about uh, some materials, industrial, uh, um, like some materials having industrial aspects. Uh, synthesized in the industry, so we will be discussing here. So far we have discussed regarding some um, uh, re regarding some basic uh, mineral like coal and uh, then uh, your limestone and uh, also uh, how to extract metal, how to prevent them from corrosion by some galvanization and also about electrolysis of water then chlor alkali process and in the next class we have uh, discussed regarding some uh, nitrogenous com compounds to synthesize some fertilizer and how does nitrogen uh, can be bound and converted to some nitrogenous products by nitrogenous enzyme present in some microorganisms and so and so forth and now in this class we will be discussing regarding phosphorus compounds. So, uh, coming to my first question, in source of phosphorus and its compound is hematite, apatite, bauxite, none of the above. So, the correct answer is bauxite, uh, the correct answer is apatite. Bauxite is uh, the mineral for aluminium actually and hematite for iron, apatite is for uh, phosphorus. So, basically this apatite is a group of phosphate minerals. This is mostly found in the sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks means such kind of rocks which has been formed by uh, application of some specific condition like high temperature and pressure and its physical composition has been changed from igneous or uh, like um, and, and its composition has been changed also and also uh, it is um, formed by sedimentation like when, uh, when a particular substance is subjected to some uh, heat and then uh, after cooling down it will be precipitated mm, then sedimentary rock will be formed and igneous rocks means uh, some substance will be melt and then when it will be cooled down it will be crystallized giving rise to igneous rock metamorphic rock means actually the morphological change will happen by the application of high temperature and pressure so basically these four minerals are found in the sedimentary rocks and uh, these are having a lot of application in terms of medicinal chemistry, industrial chemistry and uh, in terms of some um, food industries, a lot of applications. So this is bio this biological mineral with important uh, has having some important application in chemical and pharmaceutical industries and uh, chemical uh, we can prepare from uh, this um, apatite is basically uh, mainly the um, phosphoric acid H3PO4 and can convert to other uh, chemicals also from phosphoric acid but mainly uh, phosphoric acid will be generated and pharmaceutical industries uh, like having several applications some some compounds like calcium um, apatite calcium PO4 okay hexapatite that is called calcium uh, PO4 OH hole 2 this compound will be having some additional properties and uh, aluminum phosphate can be used as a fertilizer and then we can provide uh, we can uh, make some food supplements also to fulfill the phosphate requirement uh, for living bodies and uh, how does it form uh, how it forms uh, phosphoric acid is basically it is mined and then solubilized to produce some acid like phosphoric acid or else it can be melted to produce metal phosphorus also and then that phosphorus will be subjected to reaction with oxygen then uh, um, eventually it will lead to uh, some phosphorus oxide compound like phosphopentoxide like phosphorus pentoxide and then subjecting to hydrolysis it will give folic acid like that several reactions are there we will discuss one by one so this is the apatite gemstone you can see apatite gemstone this can be uh, uh, th this is the crystal actually this is the crystal form means nice uh, nice looking shiny having sharp edges and it can be uh, in the mineral form only uh, that will not have this much shiny phases uh, so this is the crystalline gemstone 
form of apartheid and as I have already told uh, this is like having several applications so mainly phosphoric acid okay apartheid to phosphoric acid we can say H3PO4 H3PO4 it can form and then one one uh, this is the chemical application chemical uh, this is chemical application and then one uh, important compound is uh, our um, th that is uh, hydroxyapatite hydroxyapatite is calcium then So this is called hydroxyapatite or HA. So this is one major constituent of our teeth and bone. Uh, nearly 65 to 70 percent of bones uh, material. Okay. Or we can say constituent. Bones constituent. made by this hydroxyapat and then uh, some other phosphates like diphosphate, triphosphate those are also having several applications like diphosphate, diphosphate of this kind Na2 P2O7 this is disodium diphosphate this is having some dental application it is used to this is having dental application uh, used to uh, you, you used to um, uh, remove the tartar how it removes that we will discuss tartar in tooth tartar in gum how it removes we will discuss in the coming slides then some triphosphate compounds also are reported like uh, Na5 P3O10 these are having some detergent used as detergent so there are lot of applications of these phosphate compounds and the source mineral source natural mineral source of phosphate compound is apatite so moving to second question the true statement about thermal process is it is a method production of phosphate salt the product obtained from the process is H2P2O7 raw materials are phosphorus and air all of the above correct answer is the raw materials are phosphorus and air so this process basically this this is the process of producing phosphoric acid uh, where phosphorus elemental form of phosphorus along with air will subject to be reacting and uh, yeah, phosphorus is burnt in air this, this will produce P2O5 phosphorus pentoxide this phosphorus pentoxide is condensed as white powder and then hydrated to produce phosphoric acid and the raw materials we will use elemental phosphorus and air so there are basically two methods to produce phosphoric acid one is thermal process another is wet process so in thermal process we will use raw materials like 
elemental phosphorus and oxygen. Then uh, three steps will be involved. First is combustion, combustion between uh, combustion of oxy uh, phosphorus with oxygen at high temperature like 2500 degrees centigrade, then followed by hydration and demisting. And uh, this wet process will involve phosphate rock and acid reaction. It will not involve the elemental form, rather the phosphate rock and like a reaction between phosphate rock apatite um, and acid. Then this is the uses also will differ like th uh, since this involves the use of elemental form, this will be purer, this will produce purer uh, um, phosphoric acid. But in the wet process, mm, the phosphoric acid produced is little less pure. So, um, you will use uh, mainly in fertilizer and in the thermal process what phosphoric acid we will get that we can use in the food products like soda, soda water we will use. So, so the reactions involved as I have already told here, elemental form, so phosphorus, P4, this is the uh, stable form of phosphorus. Mm, this we will subject to heat and we will melt the elemental phosphorus then 5 oxygen sorry this is not 5 oxygen This will require high temperature, 2500 degree centigrade. And then this uh, liquid phosphorus pentoxide, we will subject to hydrolysis, H2O5 liquid plus H2O. Then we will get H3PO4. H3PO4 also we will get in the liquid form. This will be gaseous product actually. This P25. Okay. Balanced equation. 3H2O. 2H2PO3. So, this is the first step of combustion where P4 is reacting with oxygen to produce P2O5. Second step is hydration. And third step is demisting. Demisting means some acid will be forming some kind of mist. So, that we need to remove, that we need to condense back to uh, produce uh, acid only. We will liquefy and finally we will supply. So, this is the thermal process reaction and then in the wet process as already told phosphate rocks will be subjected to acid reaction. So, calcium phosphate we can write for example. plus H2SO4 
so this will produce uh, here it is not visible this will produce uh, three ca this is so four plus h So these are the chemical reactions involved in both thermal process and wet process. Then moving to the next question among the following calcium salts, which one is used as king powder? Monocalcium phosphate, calcium hydrogen phosphate dihydrate, dicalcium phosphate, tricalcium diphosphate. So the correct answer is monocalcium phosphate and about this calcium hydrogen phosphate dihydrate this will uh, have some different composition right dicalcium triphosphate this doesn't mean dicalcium phosphate doesn't mean ca2po4 something this this simply means this phosphate is having divalent this this, this phosphate is divalent having divalency so cal calcium diphosphate also we can say not diphosphate actually calcium phosphate only but dicalcium means actually two hydrogen one hydrogen will be present hpo4 unit will be there so calcium hpo4 that is ca hpo4 is called dicalcium phosphate and then tricon diphosphate means also same like calcium is uh, being divalent and phosphate is being trivalent so this will have composition as uh, ca3 po4 whole 2 right ca3 po4 whole 2 so here uh, that that actually means same only three calcium and two phosphate moiety but the meaning of this uh, name is uh, valency calcium is being divalent and phosphate is being trivalent so monocalcium phosphate as we all know uh, as we all know is an inorganic compound having this formula monocalcium phosphate phosphate means it will have monovalency so HT, uh, H2PO4 and since calcium is divalent so two uh, anion we need calcium H2PO4 whole 2 and it is used in conjugation with baking soda to provide aeration and volume in cakes and cookies so what is baking soda that also we need to know so baking powder and baking soda both will combine to produce some some carbon dioxide or some volume in the cakes this is one graph uh, representing the different hydrolysis of phosphoric acid uh, like in presence of base this phosphoric acid will be converted to its mono anion and if we subject to uh, complexation with divalent uh, cation like calcium then it will produce mono uh, mono calcium phosphate monocalcium phosphate this compound okay then one more uh, base if we add then one more proton will be abstracted and uh, hydrogen phosphate will be produced that will produce calcium and uh, that dicalcium phosphate CAHPO4 and one more base will lead to phosphate anion itself trivalent phosphate anion and that can give rise to say, calcium several uh, complex uh, complexes it can be CA3PO4 whole 2 also it can be like this uh, CA8HPO4 whole 2 PO4 whole 4 5H2 or several and depending on the uh, uh, how many moles we are uh, reacting so the species will be generated accordingly and here you, you can see pH is increasing since we are adding base and base so from less acidic to from more acidic to less acidic we are going and uh, the calcium by phosphorus ratio is here in case of phosphate here calcium to phosphorus ratio will be 1 by 2 so 0.5 in case of diphosphate it will be uh, 1 by 1 and then in case of this species calcium 8 and phosphorus is actually 6 so 8 by 6 will be giving 1.33 here it is 9 by um, 9 by 6 9 by 6 will give you this 1.5 and here 10 by 6 that will give 1.67 ratio so uh, this this is the uh, uh, conventional 
basic and acidic and, and also this is a reverse reaction like from mono anion if we add proton then it will lead back to phosphoric acid simple acid and uh, in presence of acid and presence of base just this reaction will be happening and uh, what about the reaction with baking powder like baking powder is actually as we all uh, know calcium mono uh, mono calcium phosphate so this is our baking powder actually baking powder and the reaction involved is mono calcium phosphate with baking soda so ca3 chpo4 this will the ch sorry this is not our baking powder this is our baking powder this is our baking powder calcium h2po4 right calcium h2po4 then baking soda is basically sodium bicarbonate only nahco3 then it will produce calcium phosphate ca3 po4 whole group and along with that disodium not visible plus I'll write here in a two disodium hydrogen phosphate along with that CO2 and finally water this is the reaction if we balance the reaction then 3 calcium 8 and 8 CO3 calcium phosphate 8 CO2 8 water 8 4 NHPO 4 ok so this is baking powder This is our baking soda. And then baking powder and baking soda. Uh, then this calcium hydrogen um, phosphate, dicalcium hydrogen phosphate. This is also having several applications actually like some dimeric diphosphate we uh, we can produce from this uh, dicalcium phosphate and that will have some uh, application in toothpaste like we can write here calcium then CA2P2 O7 it will produce CA2P2 O7 along with that water basically dehydration reaction only at high temperature two phosphate unit will be uh, will be combined together to produce diphosphate moiety how does it look we will discuss in the upcoming slides and this one calcium calcium dicalcium uh, diphosphate 
this one actually having some application as I have already told in the toothpaste because this will not react in the fluor uh, with, with fluoride. So whatever toothpaste contains fluoride ion, there we can use uh, as a phosphate source we can use calcium dicalcium diphosphate and also how we will produce this calcium uh, like uh, this calcium mon monocalcium uh, phosphate from uh, H3PO4 and calcium oxide that reaction is Ca calcium oxide we will take and we will treat with H3PO4 calcium hydrogen phosphate mo mono calcium phosphate and then with water okay so these are the species involved during uh, base and acid reaction of phosphoric acid then The compound P4 resin. This is the thiophosphate compound. So far, we are discussing oxyphosphorus compound, and this is a thiophosphorus compound. P4 resin is used in manufacturing safety matches. What is the compound's name? Tetraphosphorus decasulfide, phosphoric sulfide, phosphorus decasulfide, or phosphorus sulfide. Correct answer is tetraphosphorus decasulfide. So this is a chemical compound having molecular formula P4S10. This is a dimer of P2S5 pentasulfide, phosphorus pentasulfide, similar kind of uh, compound as P2O5. This is using, used as a thionation agent, means it will supply sulfur to sub like ketone and all uh, moiety. So thionation agent, it will be used as and it is a powerful desiccant and dehydrating agent also how it will be uh, like acting as dehydrating agent means it will capture the moisture and uh, its structure is basically looks like this where you can see four phosphorus and ten sulfur are there among them among ten sulfur uh, four sulfur are double bonded and terminal and other six sulfur uh, forms sulfur bridges and this will have this kind of cage like structure like this is one uh, cyclohexane kind of cage this is another cage and this is another so tri cage compound we can say this structure is and then it will be acting as a powerful dehydrating agent because it can capture moisture the reaction will be p4 is 10 P4S10 plus
deforestant This is a reaction in what? When P4 S10 is subjected to moisture, so it can act, act as a dehydrating agent. Then coming to the next question, which byproduct is formed during the production of P4 from phosphate rock? FeTO3, FeO, FeP, Fe3P and Fe2P. Obviously, it will not give rise to any uh, like phosphorus oxide, uh, any iron oxide since we are talking about phosphorus compound so some iron phosphate only will be forming the current answer is Fe2P but the ferrophosphorus is an alloy of iron and phosphorus which will form as a byproduct uh, during the production of during the production of appetites uh, in the submerged arc furnaces during the production of phosphorus compounds from appetite actually uh, by the reduction of uh, by the reduction with carbon and then it is formed from some iron source should be there right so uh, from iron or oxide impurity along with apatite some uh, in apatite some iron oxide impurity will be there and apatite contains phosphate so during production of phosphorus from apatite uh, due to presence of iron oxide impurities some uh, ferrophosphorus compounds will be forming then the next question is uh, which among the following is not an use of tetra potassium diphosphate so what is tetra potassium diphosphate we will see uh, first option is as an emulsifier as a good chelator as a plasticizer in pvc as a buffering reagent so the correct answer is this plasticizer in pvc is not an use of tetra potassium diphosphate what is tetra potassium diphosphate this is having this uh, symbol K4 tetra potassium from its K4P2O7 this is the tetra potassium diphosphate And this one can act as emulsifier. Emulsifier means what? The compounds which will help to mix two different polarities solvent, like one is hydrophobic, one hydrophilic, like oil and water. So they will not mix. But if we use some compound which can be act uh, can act as an emulsifier, then oil and water will be mixed. For example, oil will have some. Uh, hydrocarbon part and your water is having hydrophilic part right so hydrocarbon is hydrophobic part and uh, in the water hydrophilic part is present if we add potassium tetrapium diphosphate so this part this part uh, this
So this part P207 this is this can act as like your hydrophobic part okay P207 to minus. K4 plus four K plus plus P two O seven two minus This part can act as hydro. Okay, this is not visible here. This part can bind with water. This part can bind with oil. Okay. So, kind of detergent, we can say. Because in detergent, what we see, what is the formula of detergent? Uh, sodium dodecyl sulfate, something like that, right? Detergent is sodium dodecyl sulfate. So that is actually this kind of Na plus, and then your. Oxygen SO3 CA2 whole 11. Oh, this is not at all visible. group CH3 you can say so this Na plus resembles K plus in our tetras potassium diphosphate and this part results P2 O7 2 minus P2 O7 2 minus. Okay. So this can act as as a detergent also, and then. As your emulsifier also as I have already told and then a good chelator chelator basically uh, we can say those compounds which can bind some hard metallants like here four potassium is present but in potassium we can chelate calcium also in our food calcium magnesium this kind of additives will be present so if the dry anion the tonic part is able to capture those uh, divalent ions like uh, EDTA. EDTA will make good complex with calcium and magnesium, right? So EDTA is a good chill. Similarly, this diphosphorus having divalency, it can combine with calcium and act as a good chillator. Buffering agent means it will have some specific pH value which it can retain. So that's why it's buffering agent. So like P2O7, K4. Two seven plus calcium, like it is present in any form, calcium OH O two or something. Then C A two P two O seven plus. Oh. 
okay this is 4 minus actually okay this is 4 minus c to p to 7 plus some k of h This is also another reaction. Now, uh, this plasticizer, what we will use then as plasticizer in PVC, polyvinyl chloride, this is having this kind of structure actually. Plasticizer generally we use epoxide swab in oil, ESBO in the short form we will tell. This is a collection of organic compounds obtained from epoxidation of swab in oil, like some double bond will be present carbon carbon double bond and uh, uh, subjecting it to some per acid uh, will uh, um, produce this epoxide linkage and this kind of long chain epoxide uh, epoxidized oil can be used as uh, plasticizer plasticizer means it will give some flexibility in our plastic and this is the physical appearances yellowish viscous liquid and it is used as a plasticizer and stabilizer in PVC kind of plastics. Phosphoric acid reacts with NOH to produce which compounds? So basically um, option will be all of the above because phosphoric acid is a triprotic acid. Depending on the mole, mole of uh, base we are reacting corresponding species we will get. It can give up 1, 2 or 3 protons to a sufficiently strong base like NOH but depending on the molar ratio of the reactants the following products can be formed. Okay, like if we are reacting it one mole of NOH then product will be sodium dihydrogen phosphate along with water react in 1 is to 2 ratio and add to HPO disodium hydrogen phosphate plus Then it will produce Na3PO4 plus 3H2. Similarly, we can produce this compound sodium salt of phosphor, um, phosphate, different phosphate, by reacting with Na2CO3 also in place of sodium hydroxide. Similar reaction we can expect so this can be replaced by Na2CO3 or if we treat with potassium like one reaction here as we have discussed this one potassium dihydrogen phosphate how we will get that one that one basically we will get from 
potassium uh, salt of some phosphate. So for that we need to look to potassium hydroxide or potassium carbonate anything. I will take the equation H3PO4 plus 2 potassium hydroxide will give K2 H CO4 along with 2 H2O then this one if we subject to heat then it will lead to K2P2 K4 sorry K4 P2 O7 along with H2O okay heat at some cell temperature is there temperature will be 350 around 350 to 400 degrees C molecules will react here and this compound we will be getting so this is having several applications as we have already discussed like as emulsifier buffering agent and then uh, emulsifier buffering agent and then as good chelating agent also and if we can uh, we can do the reaction with the carbonate salt also so for that case same reaction H3PO4 plus Just a minute. to HPO4 plus CO2 plus water will be formed. Okay. So, 
these are the reactions involved that's why in one of molar ratio will get the product so all of the above will be correct answer when we will react phosphoric acid with NH then the product formed the mechanism of the following reaction is uh, this reaction PCl3 plus oxygen so what will be the product PO4 3 minus POCl3 or POCl3 and the what, what are the mechanism also the correct answer is POCl3 and free radical phosphoryl chloride phosphoryl chloride commonly called as phosphorus oxychloride is a color liquid with the formula POCl3 it is manufactured industrially uh, by the reaction of phosphorus trichloride and oxygen or phosphorus pentoxide from phosphorus pentoxide uh, also we can produce then like phosphorus trichloride and phosphorus pentoxide the reaction proceeds via some free radical mechanism so this uh, the cl3 two lone pair and oxygen here also one more pcl3 so this is actually clipped giving rise to Di radical this will react this will react giving rise to two molecules of PO CL3 this POCl3 is having several applications this can act as a strong dehydrating agent okay for example to remove the OH from alcohol and to convert it to alkane POCl3 we can use right so how we will use that one for example this is the alcohol then This, use, this is used as dehydrating agent. This is actually dehydrating agent. Somehow it is not visible. So. And chlorine will be removed. Now proton will be also removed. Okay, then it will abstract one more proton actually. This chlorine will. 
दिल को This proton and this chlorine will be combined to produce HCl and this minus PO2 Cl and this is the ultimate product from so from here to here by the application of POCl3 we are getting where this chlorine and this proton also will form and here one more HCl so two HCl will be two molecules of HCl will be generated as side product and POCl3 will be converted to PO2Cl and then again these two can combine to give Cl3 and what will be other for H2 H2 will be formed right so H2 will again combine to POCl3 plus H2. This is the application of your phosphorus oxychloride to act as a dehydrating agent and to convert alcohol to alkene. Then moving to the next question, phosphorus based NARF agent among the following is phosphoric acid, phosgene, tetra potassium phosphate, sarin. So as we have all, uh, as you all know, phos, uh, phosphor, uh, phosphoric acid H3PO4, this is simple acid only, tetra potassium biphosphate. K4 P2O7 that is also not a harmful agent that is like having several uh, other applications cheating agent, emulsifier and uh, then food additives uh, those things then phosgene, phosgene is um, phosgene is actually POCl3 what we just now discussed that is also not a toxic agent then this sarin like uh, that is toxic but uh, um, cannot be acting as a NARF agent. NARF agent means what? Uh, some agent that will disrupt the functional. That is actually sarin. Sarin is, this is the human made chemical warfare against uh, warfare agent classified as NARF agent. These NARF agents are most toxic and rapidly acting uh, since uh, uh, 1938. So Germany only made this sarin as pesticide pesticide means to control the pest but now we can uh, we are uh, like using it as a chemical warfare against humans also initially it was developed to uh, destroy the nerve function of pesticide only by germany in 1932 but now uh, we are using it as chemical weapon as chemical weapon Sarin is a clear, colorless, tasteless liquid which has no odor in its pure form. So, sarin, uh, it is a as, as we are discussing phosphorus compounds, it's obviously a phosphorus based compound, and uh, this is having this structure. This is sarin. Okay. So, how this reacts? Because this is a organophosphate compound. OPP we will call organophosphate. 
phosphate OPP compound containing phosphate moiety PO double bonded O. So these are known to react with acetylcholine esterase enzyme. So this will react with acetylcholine esterase enzyme. Acetylcholine. Enzyme. Acetylcholine esterase enzyme known as SAHC and then this is one enzyme responsible for hydrolysis of acetylcholine to thiocholine. Now why this enzyme is important because uh, first is it will catalyze the reaction the hydrolysis of acetylcholine to thiocholine. Now I will write the reactions like uh, the structure of acetylcholine is This is acetylcholine. Okay. If we hydrolyze it, means in presence of water and acetylcholine esterase enzyme, it will be catalyzed. will be hydrolyzed to produce thiocholine and acetic acid. So this is thiocholine.
this acetylcholine to thiocholine conversion makes acetylcholine esterase enzyme and this is the uh, neurotransmitter this acetylcholine is actually the neurotransmitter neurotransmitter means it transmit uh, it transmits information to neuron now if this conversion is hindered or hampered because without presence of this acetylcholine esterase enzyme this uh, thiocholine conversion cannot be possible and what happens when some sarin reagent we use like organophosphate this will inhibit the active site of acetylcholine enzyme then acetylcholine enzyme will be bound a bound acetylcholine enzyme cannot further bound to acetylcholine so it cannot catalyze to acetylcholine to thiocholine conversion then thiocholine will be excess in the joints uh, uh, in everywhere uh, so excess accumulation of thiocholine will be happened inside it and that will uh, create excessive stimulation of nerve uh, and everything neurons that will uh, which will disrupt the normal function excessive stimulation which disrupt the normal function of the neurons and hence it will act as a neuro uh, like uh, it will act as a nerve agent nerve destroying agent you can say, you can say. so how we will produce this in this reagent that is simple we will take some phosphorus halogenated compound like pcl3 we know okay pcl3 but here we are taking me pcl3 how we will produce them this one from PCL3 that is some Grignard reagent we can use right This will be gentle. Then MEPCL3 plus SO2. Cl2. The reaction will yield one oxygen unit. So Me because this is oxidizing agent. Me. Then this one we will react with some fluorinating agent like sodium fluoride. Or 
objectif. Cost fluorine. Here actually one fluorine is there in, in this world. This is the structure. Then Okay. Lastly, some alcohol. will give sarin reaction is Isopropanol will give sarin. This is the reaction. Then uh, the question is phosphoric acid is produced in wet process from phosphate rock and which acid? So we'll use which acid? C diluted H2SO4. Because as we have already discussed in wet process of producing phosphoric acid we will react the rock mineral of phosphate source that is apatite and then the calcium phosphate we, we can take as the active component we will uh, react it with diluted H2SO4 and the product will be phosphoric acid along with calcium sulfate byproduct so calcium sulfate Calcium sulfate will be dehydrated in, in this process that is CaSO4 to H2O and this one um, is commonly known as gypsum. This one is known as gypsum. This one is known as gypsum and it will be precipitated out. This insoluble gypsum we will separate by filtration. This is the schematic diagram. Phosphate rock, sulfuric acid along with water, like diluted sulfuric acid only we need to take. Then uh, in one tank we will uh, allow it to react, we will allow everything to react and then uh, some weak phosphoric acid uh, like this is later then we will pass in the aging tank aging tank means to store for some time uh, then f finally dehydrate filter D dehydrate filter dehydrate filter we will do and the precipitated calcium sulfate along with uh, two water molecule like dehydrated calcium sulfate or gyp gypsum we will um, uh, separate out from this tank and the above layer clean layer will be phosphoric acid so it will be uh, converted to p2o5 also it can be converted and uh, 
by the action of like uh, P two O five, we can um, pour here, and by the action of water, some more phosphoric acid can be generated in this tank. And the weak phosphoric acid, we can again send back, uh, and that can uh, again go to aging tank, and then will be uh, uh, we uh, and then will be transformed. As uh, good phosphoric acid. So this is the phosphoric acid production by wet process. Uh, reaction, as we have already discussed, CH3PO4. H3PO4 and this CSO4 will be taking water to use this gypsum calcium sulfate dot to H2O. So these are the things in our phosphorus compounds. So that's all. Uh, this diphosphate compounds and sarin, these are very good compounds, good in, in, in the means of having like several applications, POCO3 also as we have already seen, then tetra potassium specifically the tetra potassium, this and tetra potassium diphosphate, this can be act as a good analytical agent also like a chelator to estimate the amount of hard ions present. And uh, this structure of this one, I can draw phosphate P double bonded O, one oxygen linkage will be there, and then all other will be like this 4K plus. It's also there. So, this kind of structure, uh, this diphosphate is having, and then about that triphosphate also this one also like baking soda and baking powder addition and this one calcium diphosphate this can be used in the fluorine fluoride containing toothpaste because it will not react with fluorine and uh, fluorine also uh, we need as a gum protector uh, like uh, the enamel enamel protector so baking powder, baking soda, these things. Mm, here is the first acid production reactions. And then about this apatite, this one detergent NFIP 3 or 10, this one actually is the effective compound used in one commercial uh, detergent that is tied, uh, that is having trademark tied in tied detergent. This one and only has been used. Okay. This is also having this kind of structure P double bonded O oxygen to double bonded.
so this is the compound can be act as uh, as an effective detergent because this dry fat unit uh, can attract the oily part like it resembles the hydrophobic part and then sodium can go in the aqueous layer so it can remove the dirt so can act as a detergent like sodium dodecyl -sul sulfate so that's all for to today have the things so okay we will continue our discussion in the next session thank you all